Everybody, welcome to When the Pads Come Off with Steelers Nation Unite. I'm Missy Matthews. Our special guest today, Jordan Berry. Good day. Yeah. Good day. I like it. You're you're on a roll. We're going to talk all things Australia right now. Alrighty. So this off season, we saw a lot of posts on your Instagram page in your home country of Australia. <laughs> what are some of the places that you went to when you you had the opportunity to go back home? Yeah, so I went back for about three weeks. So I took over my now fiance Emily with me. Uh, so we spent two of the weeks in Melbourne, which is where I've spent most of my time growing up. Uh, so in the southeast of the country, and then we spent about four or five days up in the northeast coast on a on an island up there, which was a, just a nice little holiday for us. So yeah, it was pretty nice up there. The flight from Pittsburgh to Australia, how many stops is there and how long does that even take? Uh, yeah, so I went down, uh, we stopped off in Kentucky first, which is where uh, she's from, I we went to college, and then from there it took us about another 33 hours with flying and uh, layovers, so yeah, it was a bit of a hole getting all the way back, but yeah, it's definitely worth the trip. Now being in the NFL, do you get to go back just once a year or do you try to go back more often? Yeah, I go back about once a year now, so um, yeah, it's just a... It's a long sort of arduous trip, takes you, you know, roughly two days there and then you have another day or two with the jet lag that'll sort of mess you up if you don't sort of sleep right on the plane. So you don't really want to do that trip more than once a year. When you do get a chance to go home, what is something that you have to do every time you're there? Uh, definitely try and go see some football. Um, obviously Australian football, you don't really get to see much of that over here. It's something that I grew up with and really enjoy watching. So, you know, you, know, you can watch it online over here, which I do quite often, but yeah, nothing really beats going to a game over there. All right, when you were hiking, you said you saw a shark feeding on a school of fish. Is that something common to see on hikes uh, in Australia? Yeah, sort of up the northeast. I hadn't really been up there very much myself. And uh, yeah, so we just went a bit of a hike across uh, Hamilton Island and we're on the sort of far end where there really aren't many people. And it had been raining all day and you're used to seeing the water splash, um, you know, the rain splashing on the water. But we look across and there's just this whole frenzy going on. And I walked out there and got a bit closer and yeah, there's a shark just going nuts on all the fish. So, what yeah. other animal encounters? Or out there? Uh, yeah, I took, we took Emily up to um, sort of a wildlife park up in Ballarat, which is a small town I spent a couple of years in when I was growing up and you know, they just sort of, um, sort of set up there where they got all the kangaroos just roaming around so you can just feed them by hand and you know, all the koalas and they got a big sort of uh, saltwater crocodile in a little pen there with the glass windows so you can get up close to that as well. So yeah, yeah she was a bit freaked out by it all, but it was pretty so that's just normal for you? That doesn't, none of that bothered you? Um, well, I grew up in the city, so I didn't really deal with those sort of things too okay. much growing up. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's pretty neat. It's something you really don't get to see too much around here, but obviously you got the bears in that America, which are <laughs> their own sort of system. <laughs> and what do ca uh, kangaroos eat? You said you guys were hand feeding them. Yeah, they just got these, yeah, I'm not sure exactly where they got them from, but there was a, a certain island where the kangaroos are really docile and they just kind of hang out and you just get some of the, the feed for them. They just come up and eat right out of your hand. They're, they're pretty nice. <laughs> that's really cool. All right, transitioning uh, to football a little bit, what are some um, of the differences going from the Aussie rules to the NFL that maybe hung you up a little bit? Yeah, so initially like coming over to college, the, the, the biggest difference for me coming from Australian football than having to play college football is um, just the lack of running. So Australian football, you have to <laughs> run the whole time to get the ball. The fields are, some, some of the fields are over 200 yards long by 150 wide and you know, you've got to run the whole time to go pick it up, similar to sort of like soccer. Um, then obviously you come over here to American football and you're spending you know, 10, 20, sometimes an hour um, sitting on the sideline waiting for your next kick. So just sort of that mental, just trying to calm yourself down and relax and not focus on the game, which you know, I feel like I got pretty good at now, but definitely my first year or two over in college was, it was definitely a big change. Now when you go back home to Australia, are you a celebrity? Do people recognize you? Uh, not really. If I head around areas where people know about American football, then yeah, definitely. But um, just the general public, yeah, not at all. So there's no Jordan Berry jerseys over in Australia? No, nah, I, saw, I saw plenty of jerseys over there. I think I saw an AB and a, and a Ben <laughs> one, but yeah, definitely not none of mine. You need to maybe take some over next time. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was a bit hard to compete. We had uh, that Jared Hayne that came over the other year that played for San Francisco and his jerseys in every second sports store. So yeah, he, he's a big marquee name over there. Yeah. Is there any way you've been able to give back to your hometown? Um, yeah, so I sort of go and help out where I can with uh, the there's a company called Pro Kick Australia that helped me get into college, so uh, whenever I'm back, I go and try and help out all the younger guys there that are trying to get those college scholarships now and you know, just help coach where I can and give them any advice that they're asking for. But yeah, outside of that, really don't have much time. By the time we catch up with family and that's time to get back on a plane and head back over here, so yeah, it's yeah, pretty tight. <laughs> all right, you already threw out good day, mate. We're gonna take a quick break. When we return, I'm gonna have you go over a few more words for me, okay? All right, perfect. All right, we'll be right back.
down to kick off. I'm Bill Hillgrove, joined by Judge Jokin and Quinn. Against the Ravens, the bad blood, you couldn't ask for any more, and it is exciting. Gets the snap, he wants to throw it. Throws it for the end zone. Welcome back to When the Pads Come Off with Jordan Berry. Uh, maybe you could help me speak Australian a little bit, okay? <laughs> okay. I got good day mate down, but uh, right before training camp on your Instagram page, you posted the setup here at Latropia is looking grouse. Yeah, so what that's... What does that mean? Yeah, so it pretty much just means it's looking great. Um, top notch, sort of along those lines. It's, yeah, just the same they got over there, and yeah, I thought I'd just throw it on there. <laughs> okay, and I said grouse correctly? That yeah. worked? Okay, good. All right, the next one for you, Vegemite. What is it, and is it, av is it available here in the United States? Um, I think you can get it online. I haven't really looked for it myself because just having family and that come over to games, everyone's sort of bringing me a jar here and there. I've actually kind of got too much right now sitting in the apartment. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice spread. I just put it on some bread or uh, on some bagels or something like that. It's, yeah, it's kind of like what we eat, like peanut butter. But, yeah, it's obviously a very different flavour. <laughs> what does it taste like? Um, it's a very salty and yeasty flavour. It's kind of mm. part of like the bread or beer making process. And they take some of the yeast out and treat it somehow. I'm really not too sure. but. Yeah, it's, it kind of looks a bit like Nutella, so I tell people it's like a sweet chocolatey flavor and they get a oh. mouthful of it and it's the complete opposite <laughs> flavor palette, so yeah, it gives a bit of a shock to them. So do you, you buy it in the jars or is yeah, it they just come in, that's, Yeah, okay. they just come in jars and then you just spread it on bread and toast or something like that in the morning. Ha, do you have your teammates ever tried it? What do they think? Yeah, a few of the guys are here, like I'm, I'm the third Australian to play here at Pittsburgh, so most guys here are too smart for me to, you know, try and trick them <laughs> into it, but uh, every now and then you might be able to get a rookie or two to, to try it. <laughs> All right. Of the mainstream fr phrases like "good day, mate," "shrimp on the barbie," and "land down under," under "land down under," are any of these actually used in Australia? Um, yeah, "good day, mate" is used quite a lot. Okay. Um, I still use that a fair bit. It's sort of one of those ones that I've taken out of my vocabulary a bit because if you're speaking to a random person at a store or a shop, and then you know they they want to start talking about Australia, and if you're in a hurry, you just kind of want to get out of that conversation. So I've cut that out a bit. Um, the other two sometimes get used but yeah definitely not as much okay. and the shrimp on the barbie that was more of a, a tv ad over here for tourism <laughs> <laughs> all right if you are going to be our tour guide for a minute here if we are going to australia for the first time i have never been there what are some of the terms and phrases we should know that might mean something different here in the united states um probably the big one in terms of football at least was uh the go shag a ball <laughs> um yeah it's obviously not very family friendly the meeting back in australia <laughs> but uh over here when i first got a got to a kicking camp i'll go shag this go shag that and we're all just looking at each other like oh, hold on <laughs> okay well the other one is uh another non-family friendly one is we call flip-flops thongs so uh okay. yeah i've run into a few problems there i'm like oh, i'm just gonna go grab my thongs and then people <laughs> kind of look at me a bit funny so yeah um other than that, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that are too crazy. Yeah. Okay, so nothing too terrible. Yeah, they're, they're, the, they're the kind of ones that jump out at me. That, yeah. Got it. <laughs> but you've probably caught yourself now. Yeah. And then if we are over there for the first time, where would you recommend we go? And like places you have to see. Yeah, I'd definitely recommend Melbourne. If anyone's into sort of sports, art, live music, anything like that, uh, Melbourne's the spot you want to go to. There's just some sort of international or national level sporting event pretty much every week, if not every day, going on in Melbourne. Um, the live music scene there is something you can't really compete with in most other cities around the world. It's yeah, pretty known for that. Um, then yeah, if you want to go see the sort of big landmarks, you've obviously got to stop in at Sydney, see the Opera House and the Bridge and yeah, that northeast coast there as well where the, uh, the Barrier Reef is, that's definitely somewhere, you, if you're into the outdoors, it's, it's really nice up there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, time for one more quick break. When we return, we have some fan questions for you. Alrighty. Okay, stay with us.
Welcome back to When the Pads Come Off with Jordan Berry. Time now for your questions. Jordan, Ted wants to know if they made a movie about your life before and during your football career, what actor would play you? Ooh. You get to pick. I'd probably go with a good looking Australian guy, like maybe one of those Hemsworth brothers or, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe Hugh Bat. Oh, who is it? I don't watch those movies. Hugh Jackman, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, that'll work. All right, <laughs> we'll go with that. All right, uh, AC wants to know, what did you do with your first salary? Um, yeah, the first uh, paycheck I got here, I went out and got myself some furniture for my apartment because, uh, <laughs> yeah, I sort of just moved in, didn't have anything in there, so I had to get myself a mattress and a, and a couch and yeah, eventually got myself a TV and an Xbox. But, yeah, outside of that, I haven't really bought anything too crazy. I didn't get my first uh, car until after my first season playing, so I didn't even have my driver's license until that January, so I had to hold off on that. Uh, Got a bicycle, that, that was very helpful around here. So yeah, nothing too exorbitant. <laughs> okay. Heather says, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? I'd probably go with a meat pie. Um, I really like them. So yeah, managed to find some people over here that have been selling them lately. And um, <laughs> they came through Pittsburgh, dropped a few boxes off for me. And yeah, been eating them quite a bit. Wow, so <laughs> what, do you just throw them in the freezer yeah, and pull it out? The, yeah, heat them up in the oven whenever, I'll, whenever I want one. They're not very good for you, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy them. <laughs> All right, our last question is from MZ Tabby 5 If you could go anywhere that you haven't been, where would you like to go and why? Um, I kind of want to do a trip through Europe at some stage, just go see all the old buildings and the history of the area. Um, obviously, they've got a lot longer history than either Australia or America, both most of our countries have only been around a couple hundred years, whereas Europe's got that history of a couple thousand years. So yeah, I think that'd be neat just to go see some of those spots. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to the fans who submitted questions. That's going to do it for this edition of When the Pads Come Off.